Well, hello, hello, my dear viewers, my dear friends, welcome back to the channel, and today I bring you this week's chapter of One Piece 975 of its name, Kinemon's Clever Trick. What a clever trick indeed. <laughs> clever trick. I gotta say, this cover was pretty funny. I've been dissing a lot on this cover story, I know, I know, I know, mea culpa, mea culpa, but... This title, this title was something else. I believe I said last chapter, I'm not sure. I, th I believe I put up the hypothesis that this was not Chiffon. And lo and behold, Chiffon is not. <laughs> this is Lola. I mean, it kind of shoots the theory that she might be married with Lucky Roo in the foot. However, it might still... that theory might still be able to float. But that would have to be a little bit complicated. But the thing now is... Was the one who was captured in the barber shop, the one we saw in the cover story, like... I don't know how many volumes ago, I forgot, but... Was that one always Lola? Or was it Chiffon? Because I, I saw Arthur from the Library of O'Hara putting up that hypothesis. And I kind of started thinking about it as well, because when I saw this, I assumed, okay, so this, it was always Lola. But then he makes the argument that there was a Capone henchman protecting... Chiffon in the in the barber shop. So the one from the barber shop was indeed Chiffon. So maybe Lola was at another barber shop and they just captured both. And Gody initially tried to save Chiffon and failed, but then he went back and succeeded, but actually saved Lola instead. Two routes now. Two routes, not four. Two routes. Either Lola is indeed married to someone, aka Lucky Rogue, or she'll end up marrying Goatee. <laughs> Imagine, that would be pretty funny. Imagine if you have sisters married to guys in the same crew. I mean, it, it would be fun. Right? It's not necessarily needed it's not the biggest thing that would happen in one piece it was it would just be a fun touch i would still prefer her to be already married to lucky rogue but honestly i kind of now want to see gody x lola sue me whatever i'm anyway let's move on to the actual chapter a pretty straightforward chapter there's not a lot to to take into consideration in this chapter. This is more of a hype chapter. This is this is hype train chugging the engines and starting to move on because that's what this chapter was. We start on Kajuro's side on the coast. We see poor Shinobu strapped with with two very well drawn snakes. Uh, we see Kanjuro like trying to make sense of the whole situation, how did it happen? Why are they here? They should be dead or locked or whatever. And then we see... Oh, this this is the good part. We see the Straw Hats and many others. We see the Straw Hats in their full Wano glory. These are the Wano battle suits. In every saga we normally have a final stage outfit and I believe this is it some people might clamor for for Brook and uh, Choppers and Luffy's Kabuto armor honestly I'm fine without those I Brookie Brook is back with a long like um, colored coat as well kind of like Luffy but all buttoned up and with gloves further further ahead 
and, and I'm okay with that. But let's go one by one. So we have Frankie. Frankie's really cool. I mean, I would prefer him to have like some sort of different styled hair. But the Kabuto helmet really works for him. And the, the entire design, is cha he, cha he changed his design on his arms and everything. And the pseudo loincloth with the... With that thing, which whose name I don't know, but it's kind of similar to what o Odin's used. It's very, very cool. Usopp is very simple. He sports a Kabuto armor a, a little further ahead. And is shirtless, as he normally is. Which is very cool. I love that design on him after the two-year time skip. The, the, the shirtless will really beefy, because he got beefed up after the time skip. Usopp got, got really strong, really thick. So yeah, we see Luffy. This is the close. This is the closest we get to a full body render of Luffy. So I'll take it. Okay, we see the coat. I hope he gives this coat. <laughs> please, Oda. If ever I can ask, if only I can ask one thing of you is please let Luffy keep the coat. But as soon as the battle commences, this coat is gonna fly and it's never gonna be seen again. I. I can deal with that. I, I, I can I can believe that. I, I'll see, I see that happen. And I'm okay with that. I, I accept the fate of the goat. Anyway, moving along. We have Brooke. We have Robin. We can't see Robin very well yet. She'll appear later. We have Carrot on the ship. Ooh, Straw Hat. Conspirators, where are you at? No, but yeah, we also have Wanda. In fact, Wanda appears before Carrot, so... We have Wanda, we have Carrot, and we have the three musketeers, all sprinkled out. We have Shacillian and the other two, whose names I don't even know. I, we know their names, I just don't know their names. Uh, Sanji's looking real suave. Sanji's outfit is is vanilla. It's, it's his sort of vanilla outfit. It's a three-piece suit. He's sporting some gloves now. His shirt is a little bit higher colored and is unbuttoned at at the beginning. Chopper is so goddamn cute. Look at that mug. Look at that face. It's the face. It's the face you wanna you wanna get there and squish it. That's the face that's worth a hundred berries right there. Look at that face. It's cute. And his little handlers popping out beside the, the Kabuto. The Kabuto helmet. Damn he's cute. Ah, okay, so they keep discussing. They don't know what happened to the other allies, to the Yakuza's, to the Musketeers, to the Samurais. They don't know. So this was actually pretty funny because I thought last chapter that they were in on it. That some way, somehow, Kyoshiro, Benjiro, uh, I'm going to mix the two. They're one and the same, but I'm going to keep calling him Kyoshiro before I... Get my head wrapped around the fact that he's Denjiro. So, Denjiro, I thought that Denjiro actually approached them and said, Okay, you know what? There's a traitor, but this is what we'll do. You guys go in the front, you three, Kid, Law, and Luffy, you go, you cause a ruckus, boom, then we show up. We show up right behind you. You'll get Kinemon to say something like, Oh, but we have no allies, it, it's all gone, the plan. The plan is all screwed, and then you, Mr. Strawhead, Mr. Strawhead, don't know, you'll go like, oh, but, wait, allies, you mean these guys? And then Keen and the others will go, will look bus behind them, and we'll, and they'll see us arriving in our full glory, and I'll be like, yes, twas I, Denjiro, that's how I imagined it anyway, that, that, that was my headcanon until this chapter. So, but yeah, that ended up not happening. Kyoshiro's entrance, then Jiro's entrance, was done in a slightly different way. So then we see Zoro and Nami, and Nami with Zeus. Zeus is a mood, really. Zeus is a mood. Look at that happy face. And Brook seems to be like, I don't know, Brook is like this with his hand and he's looking to Zeus. I am assuming he's tickling Zeus in the, sh in the chin, if a cloud even has a chin. If, if, if you know what I mean, I, I'm sorry. Uh, Nami is sporting her Kunoishi outfit with a bit of armor. With a bit of, with a bit of armor 
over it. Zoro, much like Sanji, vanilla. It might even be his post time skip outfit, which I doubt it, but again, the color scheme is a little bit wonky to, to decipher. We really don't know. It could be, it could not be, eh, we don't know. As I said, we see the other two musketeers, and they keep wondering, was I, is, an, is everything okay? And then that's when Kinemon says, no, it's not okay. The entire plan was leaked, we had a traitor in our midst. There's a little bit of... We don't know if Luffy faces with Kanjiro. I doubt it does because Kanjiro is in the coast. So I think this is Kanjiro looking at the whole thing, hearing the whole thing, and then Luffy looking at Kinemon while he's speaking and realizing what went wrong. So... So Kinemon says, I don't know what happened to our allies, to the accusers, to the musketeers. I don't know. But then... The beast pirates go like, well, we don't know either. And they stay like, huh? So yeah, they explain that they, but we might have failed to destroy that lion ship. Of course you failed. That's the sunny. Made from wood from the Adam tree. It's not something you failed experiments can destroy, right? Right. So... And they sinked every boat that was left. The thing is, Frankie made extra boats. Because he was like, oh, they might be useful. They never were. We actually thought back then that he was privy to something that more people would arrive. But no, it was just him being extra, extra cautious. So he made the extra ships. And then yes, we'll see afterwards what happened. And they destroyed the bridges, we knew that already. But yeah, yada yada yada. And he says something very interesting. I mean, not very interesting, we already knew that this was going to happen. But he tells them, the Alliance, that the feast that they're actually planning to break in is in fact to serve as a celebration of the Alliance between the Beast Pirates. I refuse to call them the Animal Kingdom Pirates and the Big Mom Pirates. So yeah, they are about to break into a feast with crews from two Yonkos. Hey. If Luffy with half his crew... I mean, let, 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 let's be honest on this. A lot of people say that Luffy and his crew is full crew. Not the crew we took to 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 Whole Cake Island. People say that oh, they're so far beneath the Yonkos. They could never, they could never take the Yonkos on. And yes, it is true. <coughs> if Luffy, even if Luffy took his whole crew, his entire crew, to Whole Cake Island things would have been difficult. They wouldn't have been as difficult as they were, granted, because he would have he would have Zoro, he would have Robin, Frankie. But I don't want to believe that they are at all inept at doing something. Like it's not like all of a sudden their two year times keep training Every ordeal they went through in the New World, granted, they, those were small things. Fishman Allen was nothing to them. Punk Hazard was nearly nothing to them. Dress Rosa, a little bit more complicated. In Zone, they really hadn't had any challenges to, to boot. Then we had Old Cake Island. The biggest challenge to half of them yet. Brooke faced Big Mom and managed to get away. Nami managed to steal one of Big Mom's homies. Chopper and Carrot, they kind of defeated Brule, but if you really think about it, Brule, I mean, not that Brule is weak in a whole. She's physically weak. She's not a combatant. She's more of a tactician, I believe. I want to believe that Brule is more of a tactician than an actual fighter. But still, 
Chopper and Carrot, with their tactics, manage to overcome Brule and actually gain an, a very important piece during the whole cake arc. So, but yeah, I'm not saying that if Zoro was in a whole cake, he could have defeated Katakuri all by himself. No, of course not. Of course not. Like, Zoro, I don't want to say he would be demolished. But Zoro wouldn't be able to face Katakuri. I mean, at least not to the extent that Luffy did. I stand firm on this. I really do not think that Zoro would be able to face Katakuri and win. Or if he would, it would last much longer than Luffy's fight did. That's what I think. Like, And people accuse Luffy of protagonism already on, on Katakuri's fight. So, imagine if Zoro was there. So, people would be clamoring Zoro to be captain of the, of the Straw Hats after his magnificent victory over Katakuri. But of course, if Zoro would, was able to defeat Katakuri, then Luffy would have been able to defeat Big Mom. And that was not possible. The entire point of the whole cake saga for me, after it ended, because let's face it, the whole cake arc had its troubles, had its problems, but the point was to show that if you go in ill-prepared, things will not go okay. And that was is what they tried to do in Wano, and almost, almost went wrong, was the preparation. If there was no Denjiro, <laughs> Wano might as well end here, if it weren't for Denjiro. But we're going very far away. Next week there won't be a chapter. I might do a video. Some, a discussion that I started thinking yesterday and I might bring it up. Which is exactly that. How will the matchups happen in Wano? Taking into consideration that we have two Yonko crews, plus Orochi's party, because there's a lot of people between those three parties. Because on one side, we have the Pirate Alliance of Kid, Law, and Luffy, we have the Samurais, and we have the Minks. So, and Samurais, I'm counting the Yakuza on the Samurais. We have the Straw Hat Pirates, the Kid Pirates, the, the Hard Pirates, the Samurais, the people of Wano, Samurais and Yakuza. And we have the Minks. So far only in Warashi, but I expect Nekomamushi to arrive sometime soon. But I'll try to do that, you know, like the Wano theory, like the Wano Traitor theory I video I did. I'll try to assemble a PPT and walk you guys through it. So be on the lookout for that. Then we have finally the three captains just like we don't care. We're we're gonna smash you up. Like you're taunting us. No, enough taunting. And we see them all just arriving at the ship. And we have this magnificent scene of ah oh, this 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 just brings Shibondi flashbacks all over again because like we don't see the full attacks what we see is the preparation of the attack so we see kids punk rock punk rotten which is basically the assimilation into the metal arms so we assume he does something with that we see luffy preparing the boundman which for some reason the official translation calls it Bounceman, but I, I can live with that. It's better than Dogstorm and Catwiper. And we see Law doing Rune. So this is preparation. These are not attacks. So they used some attacks, and I believe that these are new attacks. I mean, of course, Kid's, Kid's attack is new because we don't know any of Kid's attacks. This is only the second named key technique I think the first one was repel back in Shibondi and now we have Pankrotten 
which is just for me just a preparation of the metal arms imagine like luffy's bounce bounceman so after punk rotten he'll do like uh metal crash or something i don't know so yeah luffy with bounceman i i think that luffy's attack has something to do with the externalization of hockey and law is just law so yeah law is a badass we didn't get any full body renders of the other supernovas so yeah that that was sad i really was hoping to to see them we'll see them in the anime whenever that gets animated but when the point by the point by the point we get there we would have already seen them in uh, in the manga i hope so uh, we'll see the guys get start getting scared but they have no time the ship just blows blows out of nowhere we see a slash from law's attack we see explosion from luffy and kid's attack we see bits of metal flying it's amazing ah oh, it's ah oh, it's so good to see them working together friends working together it's so cool oh god and this ship is not let, let, let's go back the sh these ships are massive you see the sunny in front of them and sun is like this and the ships are like this gargantuan things it's amazing then all of a sudden a ship appears the ship of the kyoshiro family Ooh. and and he'd be like, oh, those are the enemies. Cut them, please. Sink the enemies, you say. Well, don't mind if I do. And he slashes the side of Kaido's ship like it was nothing. It's, let's face it, this is not that big of an achievement. We saw Mihawk cut down Don Krieg's flagship which was, by the way, much bigger than this, if I'm not mistaken. In three, like it, like if it was a fish, like like that. So Kirshiro cutting the side is not that, you know, it is impressive because actually, for one, it's a cut on one of the longer sides of the ship and the precision of it you see the cannon nearly sliced in half and it's a visual spectacle to see the the, the betrayal going the other way around we have someone we had someone who betrayed the scabbards for the beast pirates now we have someone who betrays the beast pirates for the scabbards so it's the it's the opposite of last chapter and it's really a good way to close the cycle and to reiterate and to bring everyone into the same into the same with the same point zoro remembers about kyoshiro from their brief tackle in uh, in the flower capital even ashura doji is like be careful with this guy this guy Whew. this guy is this guy is good this guy's good and yeah Kyoshiro is like oh yeah so all my 200 men are at your disposal for the way they're like what why why what? why 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 would you do that and he's like oh you know I have a, I have this debt to the Kozuki family you know back 40 years ago and he starts taking something and the, the goddamn pompadour was fake <laughs> The goddamn pompadour was fake. <laughs> like, it was not hair. It was just something. There's even the, the sound, the sound bubble t for toss. Like he's tossing it aside. <laughs> it's not hair. It's ah. <laughs> and so, Denjiro introduces himself by reminiscing about the the mountain god incident of forty years ago. Forty years ago. Like, it's a lifetime, 40 years ago. So, and how people, he, he remembers how people thought that it was because of Odin. But no, Daddy knows the truth. <coughs> oh, God. 
Sorry, give me a second. Oof. Ooh, okay, so we're good. So he's saying that no, I know the truth about that incident, and it was, and it was not Lord Odin. It was you, Kin. It was you, Kin. It was you, Kin, caused by your greed of your younger days. And then Kinemon just connects the dots and is like, <gasps> "Is that you, then, Jiro?" And he's like, "Indeed, it is." And you can see his face. Like, this is the face of a man who finally let go of a burden on his shoulders. Like, finally being able to see his friends, and better yet, to reveal himself to his friends. That is amazing, even though he's not the same externally in appearance that is the Jiro true and true and now the scabbards are back again Shinobu will take Kanjiro's place because it's a rightful place and Kanjiro is a big turd with a big poop and Denjiro just explains it everyone is like oh my god Denjiro how and why and then boom we see ships starting to appear everyone like another an extra thousand and one thousand two hundred soldiers were added thanks to the samurais that were locked up in run in Rasetsu plus the others that is saved and we see this spectacular image that sadly the manga plus just cuts into this amazing dual page of all the ships ready for the raid and ah oh, it is so beautiful again i can't wait to see this in the anime i say this every chapter now it's annoying even to myself but i can't wait to see this in the anime this this scene like boom. you know what this is gonna remind me of not that it's the same scenario but the scene from episode zero the Ed War, the Ed War scene, where you have you have um, Rogers or Jackson, and then you have Shiki's fleet in front of him, like all the, all imposing and whatnot. But yeah, of course, the situation here is rather different. And then we get to the very fun part of this chapter because ah, oh. then Jiro starts to explain the real message of the of the chapter this is a weird part because for us uh, non-japanese europeans americans whatever english speakers will 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 collectively call ourselves that for us english readers this is a bit hard to explain um because um habu port Port in Japanese is Minato, so Habu port would be something like Habu Minato, and supposedly that was the message that was to be conveyed by the piece of paper that Yasuye passed around, Habu Minato, meaning that the meeting would be done in the Habu port, but apparently the lines that that Kinemon thought were legs were not legs they were meant as a sentence cutter so instead of Habu Minato we would cut the midsection which would be the boo from Habu and Mina from Minato so we would cut the Bumina part and together they would make Hato a Apparently, that means wharf. Like so, it's not the ex the actual port, but it's a section of the of the coast near the port. So, 
it's a bit confusing. For this, I highly advise you guys, if you don't already do, go and read Arthur's analysis in the library of O'Hara. I will leave a link in the description if I remember. Go and read it there. I, I don't want to be I don't want to be here quoting the guy. I'm already doing so, but I don't want to be reading from his work. So please do go there and read it for yourselves there. <clears throat> he's a he's an amazing guy, really. He's an amazing guy. His analyses are always top notch. So go there, read for yourselves, and if you'd be so kind, leave a leave a comment saying you came you came from here. So and yeah, and the and the fun thing is that Kyoshiro was able to to move all the forces through the bridges because Orochi underestimated the time that it takes to move from one place to another. And that is very funny because Orochi is a guy that's based in the flower capital. He doesn't know about the rest of the country. He hasn't left the capital in years, maybe. Maybe, maybe he hasn't left the capital in 20 years. So he forgot about his own country. He forgot. Like, imagine if you spend some part of your life going to one place to another and you know fairly well the way the, the path you take how long it takes but then you spend a few years without going and then you go back and you're like oh was this always this long or short so it's kind of like that and it's very interesting because he was able to plan ahead much ahead because orochi's move was done very late that was very interesting, but the interest, the most interesting part, and I'll end it here, because this this video is probably already long enough, is that, whew, it was that Denjiro thinks that this was actually part of Kinemon's plan. <laughs> And, and we see, first we see, like, Kinemon from the back, and it's like... Yeah, yes, yes. And then we see, like, this ass face of Kinemon, and it's like... And he's thinking, so, are you telling me that it was supposed to be the wharf, not... The port. Oh. And we finish with a bang. And a, a literal bang. Bing, bing, bing. Not a bang. Bang. From the instrument. And yes, with the news that there will be no chapter next week. Boo. So there's no chapter on the 29th. Sadly. Next chapter hits April the 5th. We'll probably all still be home by then. I see no way of this of this getting better by then. I yeah, this chapter was pretty straightforward, except this part of the explanation, because then they have Havu port, but then they call it Tokage port again. I'm not very good with the Japanese names. And especially in one when there are so heavy, Japanese heavy names. Uh, so again, please refer to Arthur. He did a great job at that. He always does. So please refer to that. And yes, now we have 5,400 men ready to go to Onigashima. So we'll see how that goes in two weeks time as i said next week i will try to do that that power compare not power comparison sorry that those matchups for the final battle i'll try to put all the comp the big competitors i'm not speaking about the father i'm not going to include the gifters i mean i will but i'll put them against the specific group like for instance all the samurais against the gifters for instance so that that will be it. No, no more, no less. Um, or better yet, maybe the samurais versus the pleasures, and then the random crewmates from Kid and Law, and maybe the Yakuza 
against the gifters, then we'll start going from there. We'll how I'll, I'll think about it. I think I'll I'll, I'll do that. And yes, so before we go, I really I want to take this this moment to address the topic of the of the moment. I'm not going to waste that long of a time the that many time on it and probably some of you have already disconnected from this video already so uh, i hope you guys are okay please stay at home this is a very serious situation i'm sure that any of you who watches this channel knows that and you're very law-abiding citizens and you're staying at home protecting yourselves and protecting your family i really hope and I really know that you are that kind of people. So please keep doing so. I know it's tough, but we just gotta we just gotta hang on for a little while longer. And in a few months, maybe most likely, we'll be able to see this through the back. And who knows, maybe even look at it and learn something from 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 this very desperate situation which it is um i saw a video from bill gates um last night uh, it was from one of his TED talks where he he didn't predict the coronavirus outbreak of course but he did say that our greatest challenge would not be like nuclear war or something no, our greatest challenge and to our society and to our infrastructures would be a disease, a virus. Like we deal with viruses and bacteria and microorganisms on a daily basis. Like we have them inside our bodies. We are struck each year by the influenza viruses, <laughs> the flu virus. So these are not new to us, but they have a capacity to to get the better of us. Mother Nature always hits back. So, again, <laughs> please stay at home, stay safe. I'll do my best to try to ease that, that stay. I know it's rich coming from a guy this small, but I'm trying my best, not only for you, but also for me to keep myself entertained. And it's two on one. I get to do something I like, keep myself entertained and maybe, maybe entertain some people. My let's play of of Kingdom Come Deliverance is going strong. A new video will be released tomorrow. So yeah, we'll we'll see about that. And maybe I'll start another game on the on the off days. So we have One Piece on Mondays, Kingdom Come Deliverance on Tuesday and Thursdays, and then maybe something on Wednesdays and Fridays and then so, uh, Saturday and Sunday is rest day so we'll see about that my dear friends my dear viewers I really do hope you have enjoyed this video if you have please do let me know in the comment section down below and please stay safe stay inside it's not I know it's difficult even for us gamers and anime lovers who have a tendency to prefer to stay inside even for us it's hard because it's now it's not a matter of choice it's a matter of necessity so please do protect yourselves and do protect your families and i hope you guys i hope to see you guys on the next video so bye bye